How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you today? Doing great. One podcast down, one more to go. There you go. I like it. You're speaking my language. Where are you coming out of? Right now, San Diego. Oh, man. I love San Diego. I was just talking to someone from there a minute ago. I, I took a trip from, uh, well, I'm in Kansas City. We went to a wedding in Pine, Colorado. We're in like Kansas. A, in, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City. <laughs> Yeah. Too much Kansas. I know. There's a lot of Kansas. A whole lot of Kansas. So I went to a, a wedding in Pine, Colorado that was like a Hallmark movie. Okay. And then I drove to San Diego last year and it was wonderful. Imperial love, Beach. We stayed down love, by there. Love, love San Diego. Best decision I ever made to move here. I moved here from Sacramento right before the shit hit the fan. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So speaking of the fan and the destruction that went into the fan, what I want to do first and foremost is to cover this last three years of our lives. How did you survive COVID and how has it changed you? I was one of the lucky ones. I like that. Meaning? Just taking notes. Meaning I had the uh, the perfect timing, first of all, to leave my narcissistic ex and move to San Diego. Um, just realizing one of my dreams where it's like everybody told me San Diego is too expensive. I'm like, San Diego is not more expensive than Sacramento. Right. Having said that, it put me in a position being surrounded by better people. Um, but also a lot of people went online and cleaning up their business and doing business where I saw a rate rise in business throughout COVID rather than a fall down. I would imagine so, especially with what you're doing. So let's get to the essence of exactly what you do. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. One of the kids looks up and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Oh my God, that has been my ongoing struggle over the last three years to concise that exactly down because it's so much I do. Um, how do I explain to a three-year-old what I do? Actually a third grader, like a 10, 11-year-old. Okay. Third grader, more coffee You're, needed today. Uh, yeah, no, I, I hear you. You're good. Third grade, um, I have pe I help people live the life they want. So when you were in the third grade, what did you want to be when you grew up? Interestingly, I never had a plan. Okay. I never had a plan of what, what I want to be. I never had one of those, oh, I want to be a firefighter or a doctor or something. I, I didn't. I didn't at all. And then so, I became an electrician and then I became, then I worked in hospitality and then I became nerdy and started building websites. And now we are where I am today. So let's go more specifically back to where you were born and raised and what those seeds that were put into you, because you obviously give a lot to people. So how did that happen? Uh. Um. So my background actually is, I'm an East German. So I grew up in Germany and I grew up on the east side of Germany, wow. which pretty much means you got to make stuff happen. And one of one of my favorite stories is how my dad traded girls in a Playboy page by page for cement, stones, sand, and built a two car garage and a dog kennel based off of trading off two Playboys, girl by girl. You know, back in the day when they weren't all advertising. Yeah. And you went to jail for those in East Germany. So he smuggled them into, into the country. Um, with that, you always had to figure out how to make things happen. You had to, what do we have and what can we do with that? And it's been interesting seeing the correlation between how East Germany worked and you were, if you had things, you could make things happen in the States. You need to know people to make things happen. It doesn't matter what you have. If you don't know the right people, forget about it. So yeah. it's been it's been interesting with that. And that just led me to be able to turn nothing into something. And so I think that the, the German just sees all the processes. Somehow I had yeah. to realize people don't see 
the world like I do. Yeah, no, I get that. I totally get that. So who's been a hero for you? Who has been a hero for me? Um, Sarah Blakely is one of them. I love the combination of grit going after. She knew Spanx was going to work and she was not going to take a no. Um, while she still has this amazing personality sharing herself on social media with the good and the bad days. Yeah. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Ooh, now we are getting political. Obama. Uh, good. Yeah. Having been in office and having gone through, and it's... I don't care what political side people are on, but that man has faced so much opposition in that position. I'm like, I get why you are turning gray, but how do you not take that personal? Yeah. At some point, at some point, wouldn't you? And if, how did you manage that? I'm like, I just want to pick his brain. Yeah. He's amazing. So, Talk to me a little bit about what your motivation is daily. What's the gas in your tank? What gets you up in the morning? What makes you accomplish and be who you are? Hmm. That goes back a few years. Um, I lost my husband to cancer in 2014. And with that, pretty much anything. And I had to start over at zero. Um, we didn't own the house. There was no savings. There was no life insurance, no nothing. So I literally started at zero after taking care of him for two years. And what drives me is if I even can just save one person from having to start over like that, my job here is done. And that's pretty much what I do in my business where systems processes and value alignment gets the CEO or gets the entrepreneur to a point where you can step away. You still can make income without you having to be in your business 24 seven. And I hope nobody has to experience something like that. And you actually can take the time to go on a vacation and simply just live the life you want right now and not wait for retirement to do that. But that is just my life experience that is like, damn, I put my life on hold for two years. I literally had barely any business left. I don't ever want somebody to have to make the decision between paying the bills and a loved one. My best friend, he's the godfather of my son. He lost his wife to cancer and they actually had a really good life insurance policy, which has been kind of a saving grace yeah. for for his family. So there's so many things that go into that. Um so of all of the things that you've lived through and been through in your life, all of these business uh, ventures, what's been the best success story you've been a part of? Hmm. Um, one of my favorite client stories is Little Luna. They are one of the original recipe blogs. And we all know content creation and especially recipe blogs. There's a lot that goes into it, right? You need to test the recipes. You need to take the picture of it and the video and the writing and all the things. Now, they have a small team. They have complete family business, um, socially involved as philanthropy. They, they want their team to have fun. And when they came to me, their team was close to burnout, where it's like, I, we, we don't even know how to do this all. It, it, it is too much. We can't. They were ready to grow the team and add people to it to support the existing team. And after we were done working with each other, I asked Lo, the husband, for, for a testimonial, just literally, right? We should do that. I'm starting to get used to actually ask for testimonials. And he comes back to me and says, Evie, you actually saved our team. We saved 40% of the team's work, a lot of admin work, a lot of litty gritty and stuff. The team is happy to come back. They're excited in the morning 
to be able to jump into the things they love doing, not having to deal with, did we do this? Didn't we do this? Where is that? How is that? Where is that asset? Where's that video? What needs to get done? And all of the BS that happens around actually creating the content. There is no more sign of burnout. Yes, they still grow the team because the business is going too. But just bringing that happiness, not only to the business owners, but their team. I'm I'm still, I'm like, it's been a couple of months now since I got that, but I'm still getting the goosebumps where it's like, I don't just get to give the CEO the time to travel and their stuff, what they are doing. In extent, we also were able to do that for their team. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yep. So let me ask you this, of all of the things that you've done in your life, obviously there's been some ups and downs, overcoming a lot of things. If you were to have a dream tonight and you could give your younger version, a 20 year old version of yourself, a, be a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life up to this point, what would you tell that young version of you? And would that your young version listen? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we are hot headed at any age. Yes. Um, what I would try to make her understand though, is stop looking for external validations, start working on yourself early on and just do the thing. Stop giving a patootie about what anybody else tells you is going to work or is not going to work. Nobody has the roadmap. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, I agree. So of all of the things that you've accomplished and done so far in your life, what are you the proudest of? Living in San Diego. Good for you. Really living in San Diego. It's the, it's not just San Diego in itself, but this area. I love, I love the weather. I love the food. I have all the things and don't get me wrong. Often enough, I do fall back into this trap of, oh my God, what I pay for rent here, I could buy a house somewhere. And I'm like, no. I live where other people come to vacation. I feel home. I feel happy. I'm here now, what, three years, four years, nearly four years. And I still drive down the road. And I'm one of those crazy people with my phone taking a picture of the sunset every single <laughs> night. I yeah. am living my dream right now. Good for you. So let me ask you this. And all of the human events that we've had on this planet, what would be one that you would love to have seen firsthand? That is a good one. All of the human events. I actually did see that, but I would have liked to see that in person, not just on TV when the wall came down. Yeah, I was actually, I, I kept thinking about that. I was curious. I was 20 minutes outside of Checkpoint Charlie. I've seen it on TV. Hitler's Olympic Village was my backyard. So I did experience it. But first of all, I was eight years old. Yeah. So I saw it through the filter of an eight-year-old. And I've seen it on TV. I've seen the impact of it later on. I have gotten way more understanding of what was actually happening. So me as of right now, at my age, with my knowledge, I would like to be right there and watch it in person. What was your favorite book growing up? What was the book that made you want to read more? None. I am one of those people. I love having books and I do not finish many of them. Yeah, I, I feel the pain. It's, I've, I actually just organized mine yesterday. I am one of those people, um, I have a specific problem. I want to, I want to solve something. I want to make something better. I find the resource for it. I pull from it. And then I go about my way. Now, one book that I constantly have with me, though, throughout the years now is the Gene Keys. Gene Keys um, combined with the actual human design chart. I like the human design chart better and use the Gene Keys. So what this is, it's it's a personality profile based on your birthday and birth location, 
And it has helped me dig deeper into my own personality. Why do I do certain things? How do I do certain things? And it has just really helped me understand myself better, be okay with the weird things I do and be able to work with it better rather than just fight it. So Yvonne, everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? A crazy German. Crazy German. Um, reliable, compassionate, somebody calls on there. However, if you cross me, you better run. Yeah, that's me. I get it. So do you, that, that almost sounds like it could be a shirt or a coffee mug, crazy <laughs> German, just, you know, you, uh -huh. you, you, you should look into it. It'd, it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Could make some money on the side, I, you know. I should I should tell my swag team, hey, like we we need to add a couple of t-shirts to that. I That's have right. a few, I have a few branded ones, but we do not have the crazy German yet. We <laughs> probably should add that. Absolutely. So if anyone out there wants to reach out, learn more about you, hire you, what can they do? Where can they go? I am one of those people that is attached to their phone. It is set to work mode throughout the day. However, I'm still attached to it. And I am in my DMs on every single platform. So the easiest way to connect with me is go to askevie.com. That's A-S-K-Y-V-I.com. Find the social media icons on the top right. Click on your preferred platform and literally just DM me. Okay. So how are you pronouncing your full name? It's Yvonne Hyman. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that I, I, you never want to assume, you know what happens when you start doing that. So you mean like the German in the States that doesn't have an accent and then really struggles to pronounce names. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love your story. It's so good. And you know, my, I'm going to have my stepdaughter listen to this. Her whole dream is to get to San Diego. So yeah, your, your zeal for, for being there and your reasoning and all of that's huge but what you overcome and what you've done it's, it's it's wonderful so thank you for your story thanks for opening up best of luck with everything thanks so much and thanks for having me thank you take care Bye.